Now we're setting up for what is probably going to be some perilous times, a moment in this nation's history where this economy just goes kaplunk. Now that time frame probably won't be until after the election. And what I'm talking about is we're going to see a deluge of bankruptcies, a deluge of liquidations. Now I came across some news earlier today of the pet retail store Petco and their credit was downgraded to junk. Now this company was a $10 stock a year ago and a few years ago a $30 stock. That stock today is now a penny stock. And looking at Petco's balance sheet, I mean, this company has more than $3 billion in debt and only about $150 million in cash left. And with their credit getting downgraded, it's going to become more difficult for them to borrow money. And we're going to stay in an elevated interest rate environment. And that's going to make it even more difficult for many of these struggling companies. Now, I did a video the other day on the popular retail clothing chain Express and how they're having difficulty finding investors to lend them money while they voluntarily file Chapter 11. And if a popular name like that is having trouble finding investors, what does that mean for everyone else behind them? And it's not going to be good. You're going to see a lot of these companies go belly up. And many of these names, they're not going to be around a few years from now. So the retail sector, the commercial real estate sector, they're going to be in the doldrums for a while. Now, we're just beginning. They're going to hold this damn back until after the election. But once the election is over, this dam's going to burst and you're going to see a ton of bankruptcies. And what's going to make this worse is they're all going to run to the trough at the same time, but there aren't going to be enough investors. If a popular retail brand name is having trouble finding investors now, imagine later in the year as the Fed is talking about hiking rates. Imagine how many investors are going to back away then. Now, gold and silver have been zooming up in the past few weeks. And those are warning signs. Those are inflationary warning signs. That tells you where inflation is going. And gold isn't wrong. It's been around longer than the Federal Reserve. And it's telling us, it's flashing warning signs telling us exactly where inflation is going to go. And we're going to be in big trouble. Now, Jamie Dimon came out yesterday and said that he could see interest rates at 8%. And he's following in the footsteps of former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers, who a few months ago said there's a chance that the Fed could actually raise rates. So we're seeing more and more of these guys at the top jump on the bandwagon of the Fed reversing course and raising rates versus cutting rates. And I said long ago that oil, the price of oil, was not going to allow the Fed to cut rates. And if you follow this channel, I said last year that it would be 2025, perhaps 2026, before the Fed could cut rates. And they would have to reverse course and end up hiking rates. Now, they're not going to hike rates before the election. But after the election, if oil prices are still over $90 a barrel, you're going to see these guys hike rates. Now, if they take baby steps like they did before by just hiking rates a quarter of a point, they're going to remain behind the curve. They're not going to solve this inflation debacle. These guys, they're going to have to come out swinging hard. They're going to have to raise interest rates by 50 basis points or a full point in order to beat down this inflation for good. And until they do that, the U.S. consumer is going to be battling inflation. That's just going to keep going higher. Now, BlackRock announced that they're buying AIR communities for $10 billion. Now, this is a company that owns 76 multifamily communities on the East Coast. And BlackRock isn't playing. They're going to own entire zip codes, entire counties in this country. Now, this news comes on the back of them buying Tricon Residential. And if you haven't heard of this name, Tricon Residential was the second or third largest investor entity buying up homes in America. Now, these guys, they have been buying trailer parks. They've been buying entire communities. And when they come in, slap a little paint on the exterior, change the name, call it luxurious, and then begin charging double for what previous renters were paying. And if you're looking to buy a home, it's only going to become more difficult. Because as these guys end up owning entire zip codes, they're in this game for recurring revenue for renting. And by these guys buying thousands of properties, all that's going to do is shrink the market, shrink the available pool of homes on the market. So you're going to need a ton of cash, a great credit score, and a six-figure job to get in many of the homes that are going to be sold. And remember, folks, in the last quarter of last year, Wall Street bought up 56% of the lowest price homes in America. Now, staying on the topic of BlackRock, Larry Fink, the company's CEO, took a 23% pay cut last year, and he only bought in just shy of a billion dollars last year. Now, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.